Until my most recent work in the medical center in the Schwarz lab, I have always wondered what doctors were testing for in blood tests all my life, what my mom tested positive for and what it really meant. Sure, we had the labels of rheumatoid and psoriatic arthritis, a family history of lupus, scleroderma, Raynaud's, and mixed connective tissue disease, but what was helping doctors come to these conclusions? That's why I wanted to study rheumatoid factor, an autoantibody detectable in 80% of RA patients that is a major contributor to bone erosion and severe swelling in late-stage arthritis. Rheumatoid factors, called RF for short, are antibodies directed against the constant region, FC, of IgG. What does this really mean? First, an FC region is a region of a typical antibody where there is no antigen binding capabilities, but effector molecules and cells can bind, and that's where RF comes in. The FC region of an antibody immunoglobin G, IgG for short, when bound with RF, forms a pathogenic immune complex, which can subsequently cause damage to organs, tissue, and bones. However, an important note is RF is not a cause of disease, but is present as a result of disease progression. In late-stage RA, immune cells infiltrate the synovium and eventually create germinal centers, a place of replication for immune cells that should not be present in healthy synovium. RF develops in these germinal centers, where it's able to bind to IgG present on B cells. Once RF is attached, helper T cells send out chemical signals which subsequently lead to the production of plasma cells, which replicate the IgG that was able to accept an RF molecule. IgG copies are released, and a ton of immune complexes then form in the joint space. Neutrophils are attracted to the joint where these self-antigen complexes have arrived, release cytokines, and inflammation ensues. Rheumatoid factors were initially studied by John Abrezzo and Charles Christian in the early 1960s, where an idea was circulating that RFs could be induced in a response to an antigen presented in the body. They gave rabbits repeated inoculations of formulin-fixed bacteria, which led to a detectable RF level in serum. This experiment suggested that RFs were present in the normal immune system, and there could be significant levels of RF in serum without arthritis. However, these rheumatoid factors were bound with IgM. A study by Dr. Henry Kunkel in 1958 was the first suggestion that RFs were harmful to the body when bound to IgG, and subsequent experiments still continuing to this day link IgG-RF complexes to various autoimmune disorders. RFVSHC is shown here, the most common stereotypic structure which attaches to IgG. The structure studied here is derived from the IgHV1-69, IgKV3-20 germline pair, which result in a unique pairing of heavy and light chains. The heavy chain residues continue and pass through the light chains when the structure is complete. The SHC normally binds to IgM, but it also has a corresponding epitope on IgG1 in the CH2-CH3 elbow of the FC region. The heavy chain binds to the CH2-CH3 elbow, while the light chain recognizes the CH3 domain. The heavy chain also overlaps the binding of Staphylococcus aureus protein A, which usually competitively inhibits the binding of RFs to the FC region of IgG. For the FC region of IgG, both a leucine and histidine group protrude out, specifically leucine-432 and histidine-435. This structure fits into a pocket on YES8C formed by these four chains shown. The CH2-CH3 elbow includes glycine and threonine residues, and when we zoom in, we can see that the side chain of asparagine-434 and the heavy chain of YES8C combine with the nitrogen of glycine-100 and the oxygen of threonine-100A in the FC region of IgG. Another interaction of the heavy chain of YES8C is with its hydrophobic residues, leucine-53 and phenylalanine-54 shown. These interact with the hydrophobic residues of IgG, which are isoleucine-253 and leucine-314 at the same elbow and binding pocket in a different orientation. As for the light chains of YES8C, they form a flat binding face which can recognize and line up with the CH3 portion of the FC region of IgG. Now that we can see how the heavy and light chains of RFES8C interact and bind with the FC portion of IgG, we can see a glimpse of how intricate interactions must come together to signal inflammatory cascades in a chronically ill patient. What's neat about RFs in general is that they can be present in completely healthy individuals, but when the immune complexes form between IgG and RF are pathogenic, the 22 residues that participate in the binding to the FC region can cause turmoil on an entire body system. 
Thankfully, the research is ever-growing, and more connections and disease treatments are being created to help people like myself and families live a longer, less painful life. Thanks for watching!